Hey everyone, welcome back to Zana Heroes Forge. In the next two videos, we're going to be showing you how to paint a Necron Warrior up to Battle Ready Standard and then through to Parade Ready Standard. All the paints used are by Citadel Color, and this will be my own method for painting the Nilac Dynasty. So, to begin with, I have undercoated the model with Avedon Black but you could also use Chaos Black Spray or any black paint of your choice. Now as you can see this was an older model that was just put onto an older base I should say. So the base is already done for us on this one. But on newer models when we get some in I will do a basing tutorial on them. So there's the warrior all Done up in black. Now it will uh, move straight into the next step from this, say doing a cut, which is going to be to paint all the joints and the face if you wish to, or the spine. Sorry, I should say, and the spine with lead belcher. You could use iron breaker, but I prefer lead belcher as I find iron breaker is, all, is a bit too dark. If, or as a beginning stage anyways. So I'm just going to pop that over there, show you where to start off, and then we'll cut away and cut back once it's done. So you want to do the hands, you want to do the limbs here, this one up here, obviously the legs, Spine around the back here, and then for the gun details, you want to paint the blades at the front, the body along here, and these two bits at the front here, as well as very carefully doing this main box piece at the front here. Just going to get a bit more paint. bit here, here, and on the top. Just making sure to avoid this bit here at the front, this little box, and the coils. You can also paint the wire hanging down here. So we'll cut back once the silver details are done. Now with the silver details done, I'll quickly run through them. So we've painted most of the weapon, we've done the two blades, the main central body, Except for the coils on both sets, we done the little hanging bit there, we done the hands and the main parts of the arms, chest plate, face, legs, heel and the feet armor, and the spine. Now the next stage is a bit more of a difficult one, depending on how confident painter you are. You can do as much of it or as little as you like. So the next bit is to do the brass slash gold details. Now, some people will use this instead of the silver for the bodies, or instead of the silver for the heads. I like to alternate it with the heads and have some with silver, some without. Just a bit of variety in my army. What I'm going to be using this for is these little joint pieces, as well as the smaller joints so you can just about make out on the feet. There's the paintbrush here, along here, as well as these little pelvis plates they've got above the legs, and then we'll be using it again later once we've got the blue on the shoulder pads. So I'll cut back once that's done. With the brass details done. We are going to move on to the shoulder pads now. You can see, as I'm keeping this one's head silver, I've already painted the stripe on his head. If you were wanting to do the blue on top as well as the brass, you could paint the blue and then put a smaller amount of brass. But I've gone for just solid brass on this one. So we've painted these little ball joints and the connector and the little joints there. The pelvic joints. And then these little 
pistons on the sides there. Next, I will show you how to do the shoulder pads. It's common sense. For the reason to set it on stay or green. I forgot to mention it, but for the brass, I used Balthazar Gold. But any sort of brass colour you've got will work just fine. The only thing that's really any different with Nylac themes is the colour of blue and a placement of the blue. So for my theme, we start with Stetted on Stale Green on the shoulder pads. And it is as simple as just painting it onto the shoulder pads. So we will cut back once we have that done. And with the blue details painted, we can now move on to our washers. Let's give you a quick show of the exteriors we've done, which was the ank, we've painted that, and the coffin around it, and then we've just painted the shoulders. So we'll now move on to our first watch, which will be null, null oil on all the silver details. With the silver details now washed, we're going to move on to our next step, which is shading the brass details. I'm going to be using an Agrax Earth Shade for this, but you could alternatively swap it out for Reichland Flesh Shade. Both of which will leave it with the right sort of colour we want. So, all you're going to be doing is be very careful on the stripe on the head here, and then the rest you can treat pretty much the same as anything else as there's only black around them so a bit of spill won't make too much difference until we get up to the uh, pelvic joint we'll cut back when the shading's done to do our final wash before we end it up at battle ready and here we are that's the brass details shaded now we're going to move on to our final shade which is to shade all the blue details using Drakenhof Nightshade if you wanted a more greenish colour for the blue, you could also alternatively shade this with Koala Green Shade. But I prefer the darker blue sort of colour in, so we're going to be using Drakenhof Nightshade. Now this is arguably the quickest shading step, so I'm just going to do this on camera. And more or less, as soon as that's dried, you'll have yourself a battle-ready Necron Warrior of the Nilag Dynasty. You could do the glow, glow effect at this stage and put it out on the tabletop if you wanted to. But we're going to be taking this guy up to parade ready once he's dry. I hope, you, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope this helps you paint your Necron Warriors up to the same standard. Thanks for watching.